of Jesus. But nothing else can help. Love. Listen to me. We serve an awesome God on today. Because Sister Sue, he loved us in spite of ourselves. Amen. Let's give God some praise on today. Amen. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father. We come as humbly as we know how. Thanking you for being a good God. We thank you for being a compassionate God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And a patient God. Yeah. We ask you, Father, to forgive us of our sins. Yes, yes, Lord. The sins of omission yes. and the sins of commission. And we simply ask you, Father, to fall fresh in this place. We ask you to flow from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We ask you to speak. Jesus, speak. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive. And it is my prayer that I decrease and that you may increase so your people hear a word from you and not the words of me. So we ask you, Father, to have your way in this preaching moment and send your power your preaching power. It is the power that makes preaching easy. So have your way. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. For a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, the blueprint. The blueprint. As we embark on this journey that the Bible calls discipleship, oftentimes we don't totally understand what in the world we have gotten ourselves into. Let us be honest with one another on today. Many times we don't understand. <coughs> And many times we don't know what to do or how to move. And we are too embarrassed to let people know we don't understand and we don't know how to move. And we are embarrassed to tell other folk who act like they know. <laughs> but they really don't understand. All right. All right. Tell your neighbor, that's why we need the blueprint. <laughs> Many times, it is unclear to us and to those in leadership who have witnessed our confession of faith. It is unclear about what we should be doing in our basic 
discipleship training. After we have voluntarily enlisted in the Lord's army. Furthermore, there's a need for direction. There is a need for mentorship. Once we have responded to the call to discipleship. And we have responded to the call of discipleship with the hopes that we perpetuate and cause the mission of Christ to continue. Often, my brothers and my sisters, we may be unaware. We may, we, we may minimally understand or we don't clearly comprehend the requirements by Christ. All right. Not the church. By Christ. And those who have dedicated our new lives to serving Jesus and serving one another. Amen. Amen. We've been called to serve God and to serve one another. Understand that if we are going to follow Christ, we must be willing to acknowledge that the work we are doing in and for his mission is not about us. The work is not about personal promotion or private gratification, but it is for the glory of God. And as we engage this walk in this work in him and with him, there will be adversity that we cannot handle. There may be unbearable suffering along the way, but we must continue to build the kingdom according to Christ's blueprint. And through it all, no matter what comes our way as we serve, if it be gratifying, or if it causes us to be uncomfortable, we must be focused seriously and intensely on following him. My brothers and my sisters, we don't just follow him on Sunday. We, but we are to be committed to him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365, no matter what the cost. Are y'all with me? As we engage in discipleship, we understand we join Jesus on his mission of kingdom building. But in order to do that, if we take a step back, there must be an acceptance of the invitation that Christ extends. Yes. Yes. And we know that we must give Christ access to our hearts for transformation. Yes. And the result of the invitation received and the accept accepted transformation by us is a culmination, mm -hmm. which is the high point. When we join Jesus and become fishers of men, we also must grasp the fact as fishers of men, we must have a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We cannot have a growing relationship with Jesus if we only spend a couple of hours with him weekly. Amen. Not only must we have a growing relationship intentionally, we must walk in reverential respect of our kinsman redeemer. In doing this, 
Deacon Woods, we understand that Jesus is essential to our lives. All right. Do I got some folks up in here that realize that Jesus is essential? We come to understand as we look back over our lives that Jesus has redeemed us from the torments of hell. Yeah. Yeah. And because he has redeemed us from the torments of hell, there should be gratitude. And that gratitude leads us through walking through the door of having reverential respect for our king. At this point in our journey at his command and direction we should be equipped and able to launch out from the shallow waters of church attendance to the deep waters of discipleship. So when we launch out into the deep, we get a clearer understanding of who Jesus is. When we do that, we understand that Jesus is the sustenance that we require. The Bible says he's the bread of life. Jesus is the refreshment that our weary souls crave. The Bible says he's living water. Yeah. Jesus, I want you to check this out, is the designer, the manufacturer, the maintainer, and sustainer of our lives. The Bible says that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Jesus is the only one that can buy us back Jesus, he's the bridge over troubled water. Jesus is the way out of no way, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. And he's the only one, the only one that is qualified to be an all-sufficient Savior. By us understanding this, not only do we get a clearer view of who he is. We get a clear view of who we are. Many times, as we commit ourselves to Christ's mission of kingdom building, check me out. We get caught up in what we want to do for the church. We get caught up in what we want to do. For Hope Missionary Baptist Church. And we get caught up in folks seeing what we do. For Hope Missionary Baptist Church. And we miss. We let it go over our heads what we are supposed to be doing for Christ. Because too many times we are focused on the church. When we should be focused on Christ. When we start to contemplate what being a disciple looks like to us, not Christ, we strive to be well known instead of being well used by Christ. We must understand that the call to discipleship is not simply a call to go to church or be seen doing church work. But it is a call, my brothers and my sisters, to be the church. And the church is the bride of Jesus Christ. And when we are called to be the bride, 
We are confessing that we will love him. Oh, yes. Honor him. Trust him. Obey him in sickness and in health. And forsaking all others. As we commit ourselves. To his mission. If we're going to be successful. Doing Christ's work, we must be committed to Him and committed to His mission. We must follow the blueprint. We understand through our previous interactions with this gospel that the early church, Deacon Grant, and the early church fathers such as Papias, Irenaeus, and Origen attributed authorship to the apostle Matthew. Yeah. All right. We also know that prior to following Jesus, Matthew was a tax collector. Yeah. And y'all know we don't like bill collectors. <laughs> We got it down to a science. Because we got caller ID. So when the bill collector, the bill collector, we don't like it. Even though we owe it. All right. But we don't like bill collectors. And so nobody liked Matthew because he was a tax collector. But at the call of Jesus, he left everything and followed Christ. Through this gospel, Matthew was introducing to all people, but especially the Jews, the message that God had sent the king. His Messiah, who will rule as his regent on earth by offering the kingdom of God to his people. Yeah. Yeah. Understand, in a sense, Matthew is the culmination, the high point, of the Old Testament's anticipation of the Messiah yeah. who was to come. Jesus' Galilean ministry, Mother Wright, gives us the blueprint of how to establish and carry out ministry that gives God glory, educates the unbeliever, and strengthens the believer. I see evidence of this. Like I stated before, in the four words, in our text, Jesus went. Jesus talked. Jesus preached. Jesus healed. See, when Jesus went, he went throughout all Galilee, and he was among the people. It never says in the text that he stayed at home. He stayed at church. It says he went out. Come on, sir. All right. That's the text, right? Amen. Not only does it say he went, it says he talked. So when he went to church, he was equipped to teach the people who were in need. Yes, sir. Not only did he teach, but it also says he preached, which lets us know there's a difference between the two. Amen. He proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God was at hand. 
And this is the part that intrigued me in my studies. He healed. It says he healed every kind of disease and every kind of sickness amongst the people. It's not recorded in the Bible, but in the historical records, he healed so much that it could not be recorded by Matthew. And he healed so much that sickness and disease disappeared for a while. That's my God. The people, Jesus was a love. We understand prior to Jesus' arrival, we're living in darkness of heart and darkness of mind because they were spiritually dead. And because they were spiritually dead, they were insensitive to sin and they were people living and dwelling in a land of the shadow of death. Amen. The ministry of Jesus ushers in spiritual life and strength. Yes, yes. Let me pause. The ministry of the church. Yes. All right. The bride should be ushering in spiritual life Hello. and spiritual strength. Yes. Not gloom and doom. Yes. But spiritual life and strength came to all who were receptive. That lets us know that some folks are going to receive. Yes. And some folks will not. But don't get weary in well doing. And the ministry of Jesus restores the life and the health that sin has destroyed. Do I got any witnesses? Remember this? He came not only to reveal the darkness that sin causes, but he came to bring the light that will overcome the darkness. Just to share this part to you. We have a simple text. It shows us the way that we need to move as we strive to be ambassadors of Christ. Are you with me, Sister Sharon? Yes, sir. But let me I'm going to say it parenthetically for you. An ambassador for Christ. Is not self appointed. Amen. All right. Okay. Amen. All right. All right. Nor is the ambassador appointed by the church. Amen. All right. But ambassador for Christ is better defined as an accredited diplomat or an appointed representative. An appointed representative to the same is one who has been selected and sent out not by self, not by the church, but by Jesus Christ. This lets us know, church, <laughs> when we cannot appoint ourselves as ambassadors. It is Jesus that nominates is Jesus that designates and it is Jesus that commissions the ambassador. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus simply does four things that we talked about that we can emulate and equip ourselves to do on today. Matthew Let's us know first that Jesus didn't simply stay in one place waiting for the people to come to him. 
But Jesus got up and went through all Galilee. Furthermore, as he travels through Galilee, Jesus was not idle. Mother Woods, he wasn't living his best life. Gerald, he wasn't doing him. But he went through Galilee teaching all seekers, and seekers are both saved and unsaved. He was teaching them, check this out, the truth about God. When Jesus taught the truth about God, and he talked with such authority like no one had ever talked before. He was removing all the myths and the unbiblical church and details that the people were previously taught about God. Yes. Not only did he teach the truth about God, he was preaching. Mm -hmm. He was preaching or proclaiming yes. the gospel or the good news that the kingdom of God was now at hand. Yes, it is. Yeah. So he taught the truth about God. And if we are going to teach the truth about God, we have to know the truth, the truth about God. Amen. Amen. He taught the truth about God and preached the good news about the kingdom of God. But Jesus also engaged in healing. Yes. Yes. I said it was a simple text. He healed every disease and every sickness among the people. So Jesus went. He taught. He preached. And he healed. With all of this in it, on today, what can we learn from the blueprint of Jesus' ministry in Galilee? Point number one, as we follow the blueprint, we understand that we need to get up and go throughout Central Iceland, yes. all of New York, and all of the world, teaching people to observe as they grow in their understanding about the truth of Almighty God. This emphatically lets us know as the bride of Christ, we should be living right. Right. We should be loving right. We must be walking right. And we must be equipped to teach. And the last one is very important. We must be willing and able to deal with the demons. In a godly way. Point number two, as we follow the blueprint, we must be prepared, willing, and able to preach or proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Amen. When we do this, Dean is like, we have to understand the culture of 2023. Did y'all hear that? This is the, not the culture of 1980. It's not the culture of the 90s. It's not even the culture of the 2000s. It is 20. 23. And we must deal with the folks that are on the level 
of 2023. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. They don't they don't do church the way we used to do church. They don't revere church like we revere church. So we have to go ye therefore and teach all nations in a way that they can understand. Let me cause us to get our hands dirty. We may have to change how we do church, but we must preach the gospel in a way that can be understood and applied by those in need today. All right. Last but not least, point number three. As we follow the blueprint, listen to me closely. We may not be able to heal like Jesus, but we must make a conscious effort to be agents of healing. The church is not to be an agent of harm, an agent of neglect, an agent of damage, or an agent of destruction. Furthermore, when it comes to being agents of healing, we need to first be kind to one another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another just as Christ, just in Christ, and God forgave us. As agents of healing, we must be able to take people from a place that they are into the presence of Jesus Christ. Because in the presence of Jesus Christ, Church, that is where the healing takes place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This means oh, that we have to be in the presence of God. Amen. Tom, we can't take folks to a place that we ain't never been. We can't take them into the presence of God if we ain't been in the presence of God. So it behooves the church, Sister Sharon, to practice his presence. Too many times we long to get to the church. And we long to be in the church. But there's no safer place than in the presence of of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The true and living God. See, the song writer says, Walk in the light. Beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us, Sister Sue. By day, and by night, Jesus is the light of the world. My brothers and my sisters, if we're going to be effective for kingdom building, the light of Jesus in our life must shine right. If we're going to be an influence to those seeking a savior, the light of Jesus in our lives must shine bright if our goal is to make an impact in a dying world. The light of Jesus in our lives must shine bright if we're going to teach, if we're going to preach, and if our ministries will lead to healing. The light of Jesus in our lives must shine bright. See, the songwriter said, I am tired and I need thy strength and thy power to guide me over my darkest hour. For just open my eyes that I might see 
Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. My brothers and my sisters, if we follow the blueprint, it leads us to walk in godly excellence. If we follow the blueprint, it gives us a desire to get to the secret place. That's where God is. Following the blueprint causes us to stay in God's presence and walk in our purpose. Following the blueprint causes the people of God to strive for the greater. Following the blueprint requires us to walk in obedience to the word of God. It causes us to love our neighbor as ourselves. It causes us to equip others to know the gospel and to live it out. It motivates us to teach the truth about our God. No more myths about God. No more fables about the spirit. No more fairy tales about kingdom living. No more fluff about godly living. No more fabrication about ministry. No more misleading. Cliche. Following the blueprint leads us to know the good news. Study the good news. And live the good news. Following the blueprint causes us to be vessels that have the ability to lead folks to a place of healing. Following the blueprint causes us to go be therefore. Following the blueprint leads us to teach all nations. Following the blueprint leads us to baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Following the blueprint impels us to teach them to observe. Following the blueprint causes us not to worry because no matter what comes out the way, God is with us. Isn't it good to know that no matter what we encounter, God is with us and He brings us out. When we struggle, God is with us and He brings us out. When we are sick, when we are hurt, when we have no place to turn, God is with us and He brings us out. When we have problems or irritation, God is with us and He brings us out. Folk try to bring us down and destroy our lives. God is with us and He brings us out. When we feel like our hope is gone, isn't it good to know God is with us and He brings us out? In the midst of darkness, in times of oppression, in moments of depression, God is with us and He brings us out. When we find ourselves in the land of the shadow of death, God is with us and He brings us out. I don't know about you, but I call on Jesus. He brings me out. When I think of how he brought me through, I get joy, unspeakable joy. When I think about how God has changed my life, I get joy, unspeakable joy. My soul is on the land because I've been joy, unspeakable joy. I don't know about you. But I got joy, unspeakable, I'm full of glory. I got joy, unspeakable, my pathway is our life. I got joy, unspeakable, I'm full of his grace. I got joy, unspeakable, my burden, I'm light every time. I think of the goodness of the Lord. I got joy, 